Good evening and thank you. Uh, my name is Lou Wells. I'm from Rocky Mountain Institute. I found it very entertaining during Professor Gladwin's um, presentation to see the slides comparing academics to consultants. I work at Rocky Mountain Institute, which considers itself half an academic think tank and half of a real-world consultancy. So I was particularly driven to despair by that particular slide. Um, are dealing with both of those all day. I, myself, am an other side of the brain type person. And so what I'm going to talk to you today isn't quite about mass media for change, but about culture change in general and what I perceive to be some of the obstacles that we're all up against to try to get a vision for a sustainable future, which is uh, the subtitle of a project that I'm launching now called Imagine a World Through RMI. But do note that it says, Visioning a Sustainable Future, Creating Action Today. The purpose and the th a uh, hypothesis behind Imagine a World is that first of all we need credible visions of a future that people are actually going to want to change towards and then that they have to be actionable. That we have to create a future that people want to change to and then backward map from that and figure out how we best as a society get from here to there, avoiding as many mistakes as possible. So I'm going to use um, climate change as the frame for talking about this tonight, but at Rocky Mountain Institute, we believe that climate change is only one of the very good reasons we need to change our systems, that we need to get off of fossil fuel, which is RMI's mission. Uh, the, your goal could just as easily, and my presentation could just as easily be about national and energy security, or it could be about economic security. We feel those things are equally important, and we could present this in any of those uh, formats or frames, but I chose climate change. There was a Pew Research Center poll that I'm sure a lot of you saw that came out at the end of October with some very interesting information about Americans' views on climate change. The truth is, uh, and Pew is one of the, uh, the most highly reputed um, research organizations in our country, their polling is now telling them that, that belief in climate change is a serious problem in this country is actually declining, that people are believing in it less and less. And why is that? Is it because people really believe that the science isn't real? Is it because Fox News is that prevalent and good at getting its message across? Well, I would say both of those things are true and they're interrelated. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about perceptions, about behavior, about messaging, and about culture change in the framework of the need for a positive vision for the future. Now, how do you connect to this overload of information? What do all these charts and graphs mean to you in the end, and how do they leave you feeling? Maybe a little bit like that slide? Empty, unmoved, not knowing what to do next? How about images like this? How do these really, in the end, affect you? How do these move you? Does that really create a need for you to do something? In comparison, how do these images make you feel? When you see these kinds of images that have been very successful over the years, and some done by very famous people, do they feel connective to you? Do they make you feel like you belong to something? And if they do, if there really is a connection between values-based imaging and messaging and action, what is that connection? And how do you appeal to people's values and then actually get them to do something that's in line with those values, which of course is, it has to be authentic and most importantly, how do you then get them to do things that the world needs them to do? Oh, and here's the other part I forgot to tell you. I'm a Mac person. I didn't transfer this correctly. So we're going to be jumping in and out of this to get the videos to play. Let's see if I can get this one to play. That should be it, right? I think so. That wasn't that painful. Oh, volume. Sound. I'm supposed to narrate? Well, this man is saying that climate change is 30 years out, and why does he care? How does it really affect him? He steps away, and of course, there's a lovely little girl who climate change is going to affect very, very much. That's an ad put together by the Ad Council and our friends at NRDC, and it clearly is based on getting people to do things. Now, how do I get back to the show now? Ha-ha. There it is. Um, and that is a, the use of, actual, of obviously a fear. Can you get sound up for the next ones, do you think? Is the sound going to work, do you think? Can you go to the next slide? We're going to try. I can do this part if you can get me some sound. We're going to try it. 
again. Maybe. Well, there's some really dramatic music right now <laughs> over this gentleman in the canoe paddling down what appears to be a rural river. Only discover that he is instead there. You don't need me to tell you that. That's in the pictures, not the words. I believe at this point the narrative is saying there are a lot of people who still care about the traditional values and protecting our land. Uh, some person throws trash at the man's feet and said, humans cause littering and pollution. Humans can stop it too. Um, that was from a different era. I don't know how many of you in this room remember that particular ad campaign, but frankly it was one of the more successful sort of behavioral culture change um, pieces of its time. And then finally, this is um, one we can skip through quickly because you got the lead-in from David about this one already. And you're going to see it from the next David as well. So you're going to be familiar with Futurama by the end of this evening, whether, if you aren't already. And this one's really hard to do without um, the narration. This is an entire narration, a uh, gentleman of the night, late 1930s talking about how the Futurama exhibit played out. And as David uh, set up, it was funded by General Motors and a series of partners to show uh, what transportation systems and cities would look like in 1960. And if you look at some of these pictures, you will see that um, although not exactly what we wound up with, there's a startling familiarity to these, these pictures that were, th this diorama that was created in the late 1930s and how our cities and our arterial highway systems actually turned out. Uh, not that many more decades later. So this is an example of um, using future visioning to actually create movement towards change around a social issue. And since there's no sound on this, and it's really laboriously slow without sound, isn't it? Might have been with it. Who knows? Oh, you got no sound yet? I don't have any sound. Uh, you're on the mic, but you're I don't know. All right, let's skip out of the Futurama thing for now. We know what happens in that. So these were three different um, times of, types of images and, and uh, messaging campaigns that were used that are based on very different sort of approaches to messaging and culture change. One around fear, one around empathy, and one around positive vision. Now obviously, uh, fear tends to create very uh, distinct and immediate reactions in people. It creates either initial fight or flight kind of reaction. You either want to run away from what's scaring you, or you want to stand up and fight it. But over time, I believe most psychologists and sociologists would agree that fear actually causes individuals and communities to seek protection in the status quo. So fear as an initial motivating uh, factor in trying to get people to change can be extremely effective. But as a long-term solution, over and over again, it proves to be less than fully successful. What about using values to create change? Uh, as we saw in the crying Indian piece, well, that initial emotion that it creates is one of connection and belonging. It brings people into a sense of community. It brings them all together, and it leaves them to a, uh, with a desire to continue that and to want to do something. But values association on its own doesn't necessarily lead to action. It leads to connectivity, but not to action. Whereas vision, and these are examples from, um, from the, the Depression Era programs from the WPA, uh, and a very fun takeoff of uh, a World War II uh, victory poster that was done more recently, uh, a future vision actually is proven to motivate people to action much more quickly than other forms of messaging, particularly if they're supported also by things like values connection. And none of us are beyond using a little bit of fear to get everybody jarred in the first place. So this is what we're doing at RMI. This is our attempt at trying to create a more powerful and positive vision of the future. We're calling it Reinventing Fire. Our founder, Amy Levins, is 